Christian. Is that right? Good to see you. Good to see you. Hi, Christian. Yeah, that's all right. Good to see you, man. We're ready. Okay. Hey, buddy. Good to see you. Oh. Am I lying? It probably probably knocked it off. Good evening. It's mighty good to see you all this evening. Um, we are distributing attendance registration pads. It's a uh, a help to us just to reach out and follow through with our visitors, and we're so glad that you're here with us tonight. And uh, this is a sacred service, a very special service. I read something this week that uh, really helps bring it down to earth. Um, we're studying and started a series on the Gospel of Matthew this, uh, this month, and we're going to be in it for a while. And it portrays Jesus as the Son of God who has power over all of creation, over the demons, over illness, over death itself. And certainly we come to worship him as God in the flesh. But there's an earthiness to Christmas. A preacher that I heard from Florida related to us he was a football coach and he uh, he started a church and they couldn't find any other place to to worship when they started out they looked at schools and funeral homes and all over the place and he found right in the middle of Orlando Florida a farm the only building there was a barn and they set up chairs and they spread them out because they didn't know how many people would come, tried to take up the whole space. And he's really animated. He's like a coach on the sidelines. The, the word that struck me was, and this was their opening service, it was, it was Christmas, Christmas Sunday. And he, he, he said, everyone, take a big breath. He said, you smell that? 
That's the first odor that hit the nostrils of the Son of God. That tells us how far God would go for you. And for that person that you know so well and that person that you don't know at all. Hear these words from Philip Keller. Well, before that, let me give a word of, of kind of introduction and, and welcome, besides welcome. When we celebrate Holy Communion, this is not a Methodist table. This is not a Protestant table. This is the Lord's table. And he invited his disciples in the very state that they were to the table with him. And we're invited to come tonight. When we celebrate communion, if you would come down the center aisle at the direction of the ushers, you'll receive the elements, a small cup of grape juice, and a piece of bread. Those are remembrances and symbols of the offering of Christ, his body and his blood. You're welcome to pause at the altar for prayer, but uh, you're uh, directed to turn to the outside aisles and place your little plastic cups in those baskets that are on the outside. And, uh, and we'll be able to return that way to the pews that you're seated in now. A word about the final hymn. We sing Silent Night. We'd like to wait until uh, Gary directs us to start. Kathy's going to begin playing as the light is, is uh, spread, but K Gary's going to uh, bring us into singing when uh, the light gets to the back of the sanctuary so that everyone's candle is lit. And when you, uh, when you light your candle, I'm going to borrow yours, Christine. When you light your candle, if, if your candle is lit, simply once it's lit, simply hold it upright. And then the person who is lighting their candle off of yours, so Jonathan is lighting his off of mine, tip the, your unlit candle to the one that's lit. Uh, tipping the, the lit candle can be, uh, we'll end up with hot wax on not a good thing. Hear these words of Philip Keller that I think help us bring the sacred down to where we are. The sheep corral, filthy as only an eastern animal enclosure can be, reek pungently with manure and urine accumulated across the seasons. Joseph cleared a corner just large enough for Mary to lie down. Birth pains had already started. She writhed in agony on the ground. Joseph, in his inexperience and unknowing manly manner, did his best to reassure her. His own outer tunic would be her bed, his rough saddlebag, her pillow. Hay, straw, and other animal fodder was non-existent. This was not a hay or grain-growing country. Stock barely survived by grazing on the sparse vegetation that sprang from that semi-desert terrain. Mary moaned and groaned in the darkness of the sheep shelter. Joseph dozed off, and then awoke and swept the dust and dirt from a small space in one of the hand-hewn feed troughs carved from soft limestone rock. He arranged a place where Mary could lay the newborn babe all bundled in the clothes that she had brought along. And there alone, unaided, without strangers or friends to witness her ordeal in the darkness, she delivered her son. It was the unpretentious entrance, the stage entrance of the Son of God. God in human flesh on earth's stage.
readings that are the center part of our worship service tonight are shared across many traditions. They've been handed down to us in this form over centuries. Churches around the world in all languages and representing all nations and cultures. Starting with a very strange, apparently strange scripture that's not always shared in churches at this time of year, but we need to begin there because it's the story of of why God came, the story of, of our brokenness and our need. From Genesis chapter 3. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? And the man answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And God said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. And he will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. It's the first prophecy of the coming of Christ, that the offspring of the woman in its singular, there will be enmity, strife between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers, and he, in the singular, will crush your head and you will strike his heel. And then verse 17, to Adam he said, because you have listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you, and through painful toil you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. Let's stand and join together in hymn number 196, and you'll need to get your uh, hymnals out of the shelves in front of you.
The second reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2, and then verses 6 and 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For to us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness, from this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. Amen. You can re remain seated as we join together in old little town of Bethlehem, verses 1 and 2. That's number 230 in the hymnal. Isaiah chapter 11. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. Now turn in your hymnals to hymn number 245. We'll be singing verses 1, 2, and 4 of the first Noel.
going to receive an offering this evening. We're going to pray before we receive that offering. Will you bow your heads with me? Once long ago, you came to earth and touched. You touched our lives in a way as never before and never since. You came in the most humble, the lowliest of ways. Your first night was spent with animals. Your birth was announced to common people and poor people, the outcasts, the unclean, the shepherds, the lowest of the low. And so you lived your life, but you lived a holy life, a sinless and spotless life, unlike ours. And so we come humbly, we come in our brokenness, knowing that we need, we need you and we need your goodness and your grace in our lives, every day, day by day. You came to be like us and you became one of us so that we might be redeemed to be like you. You came the infinite one and became weak and helpless. You went to the point of shedding your blood on the cross and scorned like a common criminal so we open our lives to you and we open our hearts to you and we offer ourselves and we make these gifts and these offerings to you for your purposes and we ask that you would guide them and direct them to touch the hurting and the lowly and the outcast and to touch us even as we give through Christ our Lord we pray and let all God's people say In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to the city of Galilee, named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. 
And he came to her and said, Hail, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and considered in her mind what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How shall this be, since I have no husband? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Now turn in your hymnals to hymn number 249. We're singing verses 1 and 4 only. There's a song in the And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. And all went to be enrolled, every one to their own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of Nazareth and to Judea and to the city of David unto Bethlehem, for he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger. For there was no room for them in the inn.
And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was, a, there was with the angel, angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill towards men. And it came to pass, as the shepherds were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. 